Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Friday TGIF and product owner episode this week with Kirsi Salsten. Hey, Kirsi. Welcome back. Hey, Vasco. Thanks. It's great that it's Friday. Indeed. Uh, have a great Friday, everybody. Um, we'll talk about great product owners in a minute, but let's dive straight into the hottest topic of this episode, of course, which is the product owner anti-pattern. So, Kirsi, share with us. What was potentially the worst product owner anti-pattern you've witnessed in your career? Well, I'm not sure if this is the worst, but but one of one anti-pattern at least is that I have been working with a couple of um, kind of undecisive product owners, so peers who are not really showing direction, but but rather uh, spending their time in endless discussions and endless meetings uh, and maybe uh, maybe dwelling into the work rather than uh, showing direction. And um, that causes then that the team doesn't really know whether where they're going, what is the most important thing right now, what to concentrate on and and why. So it's it's a lot of like unclarity and and uncertainness that that creates. And when you think about this dwelling into the work rather than showing direction, how does that show up in the interactions between the product owner and the teams? It usually shows up so that the the team doesn't actually get hold of the PO. So they are always in the meetings with working on something and uh, uh, and then not spending enough time with the team uh, actually discussing with the team uh, so so the distant po challenge so what when you describe this like the indecisive po so does not necessarily bring direction as you said uh, spends more time thinking about what decisions need to be made? What information do we have than other than rather making decisions? It, it also sounds to me that this might be a product owner that themselves does not have that direction and that drive. Is is that how you see it? It could it could definitely be that either. Um, um, well, one one challenge is that it is very easy to just accept all the meeting invitations and go everywhere just to, you know, there's the fear of missing out. So you don't actually have time in your calendar to work, uh, to concentrate on the most important tasks of the PO. So kind of self-created problem in a way. Uh, so when you don't have time to actually talk to the customers and the stakeholders and uh, uh, you know think about the future and think about what actually is valuable both to the company and the customer so what is the actual value that requires time so if you don't make that time as PO to your calendar then you know then you're just stuck in the meetings and and that's it so it's it's uh, it requires a lot of time management skills as well because you know you can fill your calendar with meetings these days very very easily yeah especially in a remote setting where everything is happening through meetings yeah. of course uh, what one I, I was just thinking about this discussion uh, that i've had with with many pos and i eventually ended up creating a kind of a checklist to help us have that conversation with the product owners called the, the Product Owner Sprint Checklist. I'll put the link in the show notes. And, and I was just reminded how important it is to actually set the expectations with the product owner. So of course, as Scrum Masters and Agile Coaches, we, we know more or less where the product owner needs to be for the team to be productive. And of course, not everything, but it, we have the ceremonies and, and we know more or less how the sprint cycle goes. So we can bring that to the product owner, but then the product owner can also bring to us what else is on their agenda. 
right? Because sometimes it might be other roles that happens quite a lot, especially in smaller companies. But it, it might be that there's something else going on that they need to attend to. And then maybe we need to have support for the product owner. Like in having that deliberate conversation can be really helpful to set the expectations both from the team to the PO as well as from the PO to the team. But what other strategies have you used successfully, Kirsi, to work with these POs? Yeah. So um, we actually did so that we booked time with with the POs uh, every Friday. So Monday was a, was the, the sprint planning. So before the sprint planning, we booked time with the PO uh, to where I kind of uh, coached them to think about the 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 direction, the the vision, where they are actually heading towards and why and what kind of what is the the actual product vision? Sometimes, in a big corporation, especially in a regulated industry, it might be not so clear. Surprisingly, if it's a very kind of, um, uh, for example, reporting internal or the authorities focused um, area. So, what the the product vision there is then? But uh, there, I, I would claim that you can find that uh, through discussions. There is always the bigger goal, and what we did is we we took a look at that, and then we took took a look at the quarterly goals because they have this routine of quarterly goals, and then talking about uh, what they have learned in the different discussions, for example, with the stakeholders, what is most important right now, and why. Uh, and then if if it was was kind of vague, then I kind of kept questioning uh, and and digging in, especially the why. Uh, so they were prepared before the sprint planning to actually brief the team on, okay, this is our longer term goal. And this quarter we are concentrating on these because this and that. So this sprint, I think that this would be our biggest priority. And then they would start the sprint goal discussion together with the team. Absolutely. That, um, that's so, a great uh, yeah. great idea. Um, yeah, go ahead, continue. Yeah, there was uh, then uh, another, another kind of um, practical thing is that what I've noticed is that many teams, for some reason, they have um, a long list of sprint goals. I worked with one team who asked me, or actually they approached me to ask help because Jira has such a short uh, field for the sprint goal that can it be enlarged somehow so that the sprint goal would fit. And then I went to discuss that, okay, wh why do you want it enlarged and, and what's the, the challenge there? And I found out that they actually put their sprint goals in one note because it's such a long list of things that it doesn't fit to the sprint goal field. So we then started, think, you know, reviewing that and and discussing together with the scrum master and the PO, and then together with the team after that. That okay, it is not so important to list all the important tasks, but rather think about the outcome. So what is the value that you're trying to 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 achieve in this sprint? And then that around that is your sprint goal. And preferably, you would only have one. So that was a challenge from this long, long list to one sprint goal, but little by little. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's where the alliance with the PO can really help. Yeah. But of course, not all POs are bad. Some are really great POs. So Kirsi, describe that for us. The best product owner you've ever worked with. How did they work? Mm. I have worked with many great product owners but i think um what is maybe common for all of them is that they're uh they manage to be at the same time very inspiring but also kind of uh, modest so taking a step back uh, when needed um and what i mean by that is that inspiring in a way that they are able to to kind of um put all the all the needs and all the requirements into this clear and simple focus that has a purpose and then communicate that uh, to the team and to the stakeholders so they are um, kind of 
also able to to silence the noise of all these needs and requirements from the team. So the team doesn't have to be bombarded with everything, but they are there to to kind of distill that into this this clear and simple focus and then present that in a very inspiring way. So you kind of you want to work towards that goal because it's so inspiring. And what I meant about um, kind of stepping te- the taking one step back is that they have also managed to n- not steal the spotlight every time so they can al- also make the team members shine when for example demoing things or representing the team if the team members want to represent then uh, they, they give room and they they only steal the spotlight when talking about the vision and and the goals and uh, kind of um, Obviously, when talking to the customer, being the face of the customer and so on. But there's this um, this kind of, um, you can, you only have uh, one mouth and two ears type of thing. Although product owners have to talk a lot, but it's good that they can listen. And so. especially listen to the questions that might arise when yeah. they bring in their communication, their vision, their direction, because the questions help us as product owners uh, also fine tune how we communicate with the team and uh, even make decisions based on the questions that we get. Because of course the team knows something about the product that product owners usually don't because the team is working with the product in a much more detailed manner than product owners do. And product owners know a lot more about the customer, hopefully, than the team does. And and the questions can be a really great way to fine tune that message. So coming back to that two years, one mouth situation you were referring to, it's really important to listen to the questions as well. Mm. And then also encourage to um, experiment because the team might, when when discussing about, um, you know, the customer uh, or the stakeholder ideas and and everything that that is then then distilled into this these goals and priorities and and vision and all of that and then the team because they have the expertise on the area on the development and all of that then they they could suggest that hey what if we tried this or some teams might not then have actually the courage to to uh, propose experiments. So I think the good product owners that I've met, they encourage the team to experiment and learn. Uh, and they, that's a really good way of getting feedback and, and uh, deciding on the on the direction. Not very common on regulatory, regulatory industries, I have to say. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so needed because there's so many ways to fulfill those regulations if we if we stick to what we've always done we can never learn anything and of course eventually we can't provide more value either uh Mm. so kirsi unfortunately we're getting close to the end but i didn't want to go without asking you where can people find out more about you and the work that you're doing well you can reach me in linkedin uh I'm happy to to chat and and connect with people. So so that's the best way to contact me, I would say. Absolutely. Uh, Kirsi, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. It's great to finally have you here, even though we met so long ago. We finally got to record a conversation here on the podcast. So thank you for being here and for being so generous with your time and your knowledge. Thank you for having me, Vasco. It was great to talk to you. One more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast is over, but there's a lot more we have to share. We have developed our own membership site where you find a community of active and engaged Scrum Masters. In this site, you get access to exclusive content and get to interact with us, your podcast host, as well as the best Scrum Masters in the world. So join us at scrummasterpodcast.com and keep this podcast free of advertising. See you next week for one more full week of Scrum Master tips and tricks. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.